Huawei slams FedEx. Did you hear about this, Will? Wait a second, Will's back! Holy moly. He missed it, he missed the spot. Uh, came back very upset, in fact, that anyone dared to sit in his chair and uh, keep it warm in his absence. I appreciate that. I Jack. tried my Don't best to keep things at bay, to maintain a civil workplace. <laughs> But there's no, I can't look. I can't get between two grown men doing what grown men do. Well, <laughs> thanks for keeping the, the seat warm, Jack. I appreciate Anyway, that. Will's back so you can all relax. For each one of you that commented, you said, where's Will? Equally, some people commented, they're like, this Jack guy. Phew, not bad. There was some, Will, admit the truth. There were some of those comments. All right, so where do you stand on it, Will? I, I'm good either way. I mean, I was gone for like a day, but uh, you know, thanks Jack for filling in, filling in. So good. Jack says there were more "Where's Will" comments, but he's just being nice, of course. Because when I came into work today, it was tension. You could cut the tension. Otis feels the tension. You could cut the tension with a knife when I came in here. I said, did you guys have a chat yet? And they're like, oh, we didn't have a chance to talk yet. And I was like, after a weekend, there's a lot to talk about. And they're like, nah, we're not interested. <laughs> so anyhow, it's, uh, we're going to mend it. It's going to take some time, but Will's back. Uh, Huawei having issues with FedEx. We heard about this, but this was a weird... The case is getting so much weirder. We have a very specific example now of FedEx... Uh, selecting to not deliver a single phone, one package from the UK to the US for a publication, actually. Uh, the publication PC Mag. They were just trying to send a P30 Pro from their UK office to their US office. And the, they, they shipped it with FedEx and it got returned to the sender. Parcel was returned by FedEx due to, this is the message, U.S. government with Huawei and China government returned to sender. What a weird, what? Excuse me? Now, Huawei, of course, they think it's some sort of vendetta. They think FedEx is, uh, is targeting them based on this executive order, everything that's been going on. Although it appears FedEx doesn't have to abide by any of this because the device itself can still, it fits, it fits the... Uh, parameters, the necessary requirements to be shipped. Uh, the smartphone in question had been sent by the UK office of PC Mag to US colleagues. PC Mag reported that according to tracking information provided by Parcel Force and FedEx, the phone left London, flew to Indianapolis, spent five hours in Indianapolis and was promptly returned to London same day, the same day, guys. So they're like, nah, no, thank you. As soon as they knew what it was. Now, of course, the, the, the question here is, is FedEx trying to send a message in conjunction with all the other stuff that's going on? Did they have a right to do this? I mean, they're a private company. Of course, they had a right to do whatever they want. But PC Meg themselves, they're uh, uh, protesting. And interestingly enough, Huawei, on tw addressing things on Twitter... Was FedEx within its rights to prevent a P30 Pro from being delivered from the UK to the US? No. Representatives from Huawei, UPS, and PC Mag slam the courier's vendetta. Hashtag Huawei Facts. What is Huawei Facts, by the way? Is that an official account? Will, can you back me up here? What is this Twitter account? Huawei Facts? I've never seen it before. The official truth and facts about Huawei. Facts.huawei.com. It's a lot of followers. Whoa. We'll be fine despite U.S. sanctions. This looks like an official account. I mean, Huawei has 4 billion Twitter accounts. Look at the right there. You may also like Huawei Technologies, Huawei Europe, Huawei Mobile, Huawei Enterprise, Huawei Mobile. <laughs> Enough accounts or what? Jeez. Holy. Anyway, click on facts.huawei.com, which is the URL listed on in the bio of the Twitter account, it seems official to me, 
Oh, maybe not. I don't know. It seems official to me. Huawei.com, yeah. Slash EN slash fax. Okay, so it's an official. So Huawei is beefing with FedEx on the Twitter on the Twitter account now. Direct beef. And PC Mag has uh, selected the Huawei side saying they should be able to, to ship their, their device wherever they want to send it. Now, because FedEx has been at the forefront of this issue, or at least uh, they've been discussed now a number of times with these shipments ending up back and, and being unwilling to ship Huawei devices, there's some serious consideration now about them becoming one of the first names officially on China's very own entity list. Because, of course, they, when the, when the stuff went down with Trump, they're like, you know what? We could do our own list. We're going to do a non-reliable entity list. And they could go ahead and throw FedEx on there, essentially saying, you know, you're not an ally. You're not a friend of ours. And, of course, that could be meaningful to FedEx because I'm sure, in the meantime, there's a fair uh, amount of business that they do back and forth with China for other products, devices outside the realm of Huawei. So that could be meaningful from that standpoint. Is this just, uh, is this bickering? Should they be doing this? Apparently this package adhered to regulations for shipping cell phones. It listed the manufacturer, model number, and IMEI. So that's apparently what's necessary when you're trying to ship a smartphone of any kind from one place to another. But FedEx didn't, didn't, uh, didn't obviously ship it. And a company spokesperson from Huawei says the recent experiences where important commercial documents sent via FedEx were not delivered to their destination undermines our confidence. Well, rightfully so. We will now have to review our logistics and document delivery support requirements as a direct result of these incidents. So it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of the same story, isn't it? It's tightening up. FedEx somehow keeps finding themselves in the middle of it. I don't know where UPS lands on this. Obviously, there's other shipping companies. You have DHL is very popular in uh, in Asia as well. So they're going to have to lean into that. But what's the, what's the message to individuals out there in the world? If you're trying to ship a Huawei device, P30 Pro or otherwise, probably want to stay away from FedEx at the moment. Seems pretty complicated, especially if the U.S. is involved as a destination source or otherwise. Uh, but Huawei's not happy about it and they're beefing straight on Twitter. Next up, China confirms President Xi, Z, Xi. Did I get this right yet? I, I don't think I ever will. Uh, he's going to take a three-day trip to Japan this week, and that's important because that's the where the G20 summit is happening. And getting back to this idea, this uh, these various issues going on with Huawei and the, the trade situation and so forth, Trump, uh, the markets, because this is a business show as well. Well, I don't know if you know. I don't, I don't know if you knew that. No, I feel the need to let you know because you you weren't here last week, so you may you know, you're vac you're out on uh, you're at the cottage on a yeah. Muskoka chair. This is all new to me. You know you you were having a Coors Light. You were, uh, I mean, you were having a barbecue maybe. Mm -hmm. What were you doing, by the way? Just hanging out at the cottage with some dogs and some friends. When I asked you that, you like looked over to the side a little bit, like uh, this. I was trying to envision. No, myself. no, because the CIA says when you do that, it's uh, you're guilty. It's a bad tell. Yeah, you're guilty. Yeah, he looked at both sides. Yeah. So he's guilty. And then some people dispute that because it's gonna be a comment right now, which is like, which is like, Louis, not true. Uh. So you're fine too. Yeah. Say whatever you like. I, I find that I do that a lot. It's, you're it's all, you're always lying, basically. <laughs> yeah. What you find is that you're lying fairly frequently. Anyway, you didn't have a barbecue at all? No, we did. Oh, you did? Yeah. Well, what did you put on the barbecue? Um, shrimp kebabs. Really? Yeah. We made them. Some, wow. Some uh, peppers. Peppers? What about lime? Any lime on there? Uh, yeah, we had lime. You had I didn't lime. put some on, but probably... It was, it was lime yeah, there. Was okay, there. well, geez, man. Willie, dude, holy. What a life. <laughs> Guy like him, guy like Will. You guys don't understand the type of life he leads, all right? Behind closed doors, yeah, behind he, open he, doors. You don't want to know. You don't know what he's up to. Anyway, so that's very important, Will. Uh, thanks for sharing that with us. But you know okay. there's big time world news happening. <laughs> no, really? Yeah, so, so you know, there's things people are worried about things beyond your shrimp, okay. Will, and your lime or lack thereof. Yeah. 
So anyway, this is a big deal. President of China going to go to Japan for the G20. Global markets rebounding. Happy. We're going to talk. We're going to have a chat. Uh, Trump sits down. Apparently, there's a chance they could have a dinner together. In fact, outside of the major summit, they could have a dinner. They could talk to each other. They could use words. They could negotiate. It's possible. And any talking is better than no talking. Talking is great. Human beings talk. Solve your problems like you and Jack. This is one thing you guys have to learn. You know, when there's an issue, you talk, okay? You don't just get all, you don't clench your fists and sit at your desk and. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, this right here, he doesn't solve anything. <laughs> Why I oughta? Why I oughta. Yeah, you can't, that's not going to solve anything. So you talk and, and if you guys think you're above talking, look, the biggest dudes in the world. Uh, President of China, President of the United States, even they can talk. All the beef, all the banter, trade this, jobs that, tariffs this, fake news, all the rest of it. Look at that. They can still sit down and have a chat. At least that's the hope at the moment. And it's, had po it's already had a positive impact and they haven't even ha had a word yet. Now, the reason this is, is important is because originally the President of China was like, I don't know if I'm going to go to Japan. Everybody's, I'm not happy with the state of communication at the moment. I'm not, I'm not happy with the negotiations. Then the Huawei thing happens and the tariffs already exist on a, a number of various products. <laughs> and you're trying to throw me off track with uh, Trump memes right now. Uh, I, I heard he got a new haircut though. New haircut? How can he get a new haircut? His haircut is very specific. No, it, you can't do a lot, a lot else with that haircut. It's yeah, no. That, right here. Wait, is this new? Is this actually new? I felt like it, like uh, it was on the news. I'm not sure. This might be a meme or something. I don't know if this is real. I don't know if I should trust this. Well, oh, June third, maybe he yeah. did get a new haircut. You know what? Much better than what he had. I don't know how he does it though. How does he do a different haircut? Because his hair situation is so. Unusual. Yeah, all right. More respectable. I, I, yeah, all right. He's just more traditional. He's just going back with mm -hmm. it. It's not doing a lot of funky stuff on top. I don't know how he achieved it. He's the president. He has new, there's new hair technology on the market that he has access to, and that's, that's exactly how this must have happened. Anyway, so, so the expectations were low. It turns out that he's going he's gonna, to uh, gonna visit. He's going to be there in Japan for the G20. They're probably going to have a meeting. They're going to resume talks. Now, that said, on uh, China's state broadcaster CCTV, Friday, they criticized Washington's decision to add five Chinese companies to its list of entities considered a threat to national security. So they're doubling down. They're digging their heels in in the U.S. as far as which companies are okay to work with and which aren't. And uh, China continues to believe that the more they dig into this, the less likely they're going to be able to find any kind of resolution in trade or otherwise. So they put that statement out there, but then he's traveling. President of China will travel to the G20. So it's kind of like a little bit of both. They're, they're, they're not 100% happy, but they're open to conversation. So I don't know. Here's to hoping something gets achieved. I'm not sure what can be achieved in a single conversation. Uh, maybe nothing will. If you want to get grim on it, maybe nothing happens. Maybe they uh, reinforce this uh, deadlock. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you know what? I don't like what you're saying. And another other guy, I don't like what you're saying. And then uh, we keep diving deeper. And, and then the markets go the other way. It's quite possible as well. Uh, either way, from a tech perspective, if you're sitting there wondering or waiting for some sort of alleviation on the Huawei front, this could be... A positive sign for you specifically because they're going to talk you know bill gates he claims that his greatest mistake was not beating android creating something like it or as popular as android became bill gates of course the founder of microsoft the de facto operating system for your laptops, your computers, and so forth. The desktop operating system that changed the whole industry alongside whatever Apple was doing at the time, but at a much smaller scale over the years than what Microsoft was able to achieve with Windows. 
Uh, it is kind of weird that Microsoft didn't have a better play, wasn't quicker to react to the, to the transition towards mobile operating systems. They, of course, had Windows Phone. They had products over the years. But they typically, uh, they, they were lagging a little bit. Uh, by the time they were delivered, it was like it was too late to, to, to properly disrupt the marketplace. A lot of that had to do with the ecosystems, the app stores, and so forth. I remember even with BlackBerry devices when it was like, oh, you couldn't get Instagram on Blackberries and, and, and you could envision that being a problem for those platforms. Nobody wants to be a part of a platform where they can't get access, the access that other people have to specific, especially popular apps that are out there. I used Windows Phone a little bit back in the day. It feels like a lifetime ago. Uh, the Nokia Lumia with the, had the big camera puck on the back. Is it, was it the 1020? You know, maybe it was before that. The yellow one it was a pretty cool looking device. Very different. And I actually like what some of them were doing. What they were doing on well, the 520 was more recent. I liked what they were doing with the hardware. It was different from everything else that was on the market at that time. Uh, but again, it, it felt like a second-class citizen in the mobile OS uh, department. It seemed like there were only going to be two. That was it. Yeah, it was the 1020. All right. The Lumia 1020 had that that bright yellow. It looked like a Lambo with the huge camera. It had a good camera. I think it was 41 megapixels, which at the time was just bananas. Hard to believe. Much like the color, in fact. Anyway, uh, it was all happening. BlackBerry, Windows Phone, Android. And it seemed obvious at the time that, like, Android was going to be the winner in the space as far as market share, market penetration. And it could have been Microsoft if they, if they had been there a bit sooner. They had the money, they had the, the, the reach to, have, to, to, to be that platform, but they got out-Googled, you know? Mm. Google was there, and uh, they gobbled up that free space, that real estate. Now... Uh, Bill, he gave this uh, interview recently in which he said that was his greatest mistake, not having created the mobile OS to go alongside the Apple mobile OS. Because uh, in in this particular interview, and I'm sure most people would agree, like they, there were going to be two probably because of the iPhone at the time was going to protect its own exclusive operating system. Now, in this interview, he claims that the size of the alternative operating system that he could have made the the uh, business size would have been equivalent to four hundred billion dollars, and that's obvi obviously that's a lot of money, Will. And you have to believe that in some way Google is currently benefiting. Of course, Google doesn't; their business is more diversified. They don't go and sell or license an operating system in the same way that Microsoft had done with Windows, and so they're making money in in a number of other ways through that market penetration and the user base that jumps on Android at a certain point in time, they're going to bank later and they're okay with that. So different business models, I think Google was set up perfectly. Like I think their business model and the, the state that they were, stage that they were at with the internet and their other products at the time put them in a unique position to become the operating system of the mobile device. And obviously the, in retrospect, it's easy to say that, but uh, it is a bit. It is a bit surprising that Microsoft didn't have a better play, mm -hmm. but that happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, where you can have so much success in one department that you just assume that success is going to be there in the next place you go, and that you've got time because you have such a lead or because you're so prominent or well established. And it did have that feeling at a moment when Windows Phone came out. Like there were some serious fans. Yeah, people loved it for a minute. Like uh, obviously it was a smaller group of individuals but there was some clout with the brand and it was it was a unique interface kind of like xbox it has a real xboxy type yeah, of interface they're trying something new called metro ui mm -hmm. and it's supposed to blend like the smartphone tablet and you know the desktop together. i remember that yeah i mean it looks it looks similar they, yeah they had that, I, I mean but you have uh, along the way even microsoft desktop products weren't received that well different versions of windows that people were like I, that's garbage or I hate that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to it's hard to get to the top in the first place in terms of market dominance and then it's harder to stay there. It is harder to have everything you ever do be successful. And so, it's kind of cool at least that he's addressing it. 
a lot of people don't want to talk about their mistakes and are not going to be as candid as he, he of course, one of the richest people in the world. But uh, makes a lot of sense. I think a lot of people probably assumed that that would have been one of Microsoft's big mistakes, not having a major play in the mobile OS universe. Walmart is using AI to prevent checkout theft. I actually experienced this the other day, yesterday, actually. I experienced this. I was at Walmart. I was trying to get baseball cards, you know. Recently, the uh, the kids are into collecting baseball cards. Mm. And so we were in there looking, kind of messed up, actually, because we bought 2019 baseball cards. And there's a lot of good rookies in 2018 and 2017. And they had 2018 and 2017 boxes and packs in the store. So next time we go back, we're going to buy from that. Hey, there's an Otani card. That's a important. That's like a, I think we got that card. The second from the left there. Yeah, we got that one. But it's not his real rookie because it's, tr it's his second year in the league. So there's like more than one rookie. It's all complicated. But what you really want is his 2018 card. This is his 2019 card. And his 2018 card, he's pitching, not hitting. His 2019 card, he's hitting. So it's, it's all very interesting, very cool. Uh, anyway, I learned a lot about cards in the, last, uh, in the last two days, but that's not the point. The point is when I'm going to pay at the Walmart checkout, it's a, uh, it's a giant screen and you're on the screen being recorded. I don't know if any of you guys experienced this yet. Did you experience that? Buying a football. Yeah. Yeah. So you walk up and it's a big display and it says you're being recorded. And as soon as you walk up, the light goes red and it's a pretty wide angle lens. So it's like sees your whole body in your face and it gives you this kind of like terms of service thing which says like, you're being recorded right now. You agree that you're gonna scan every single item and not try to steal anything, something along those lines. And of course uh, you click okay, and then you begin to scan. And the reason they implemented this, this technology here is because apparently there's like certain themes that exist for customers where they don't, uh, they don't pay for certain things. Did you know this? Like when you go to self checkout, they don't scan some things. And I mean, the, the urge has been there. I'm like, I can easily not scan this. Okay, but no, Kirk, I'm not saying the urge to just not scan. I'm saying there's certain items that don't get scanned more than others. So, for example, I mean, this article, of course, states it. Uh, this article, by the way, is on uh, PCMag.com. Milk. People don't scan milk. And they say the reason is because it's hard to scan milk. For whatever reason, it's harder. I guess where the barcode is placed. I'm not, don't look, hey man, don't look at me like that. People find it hard to scan milk. They get frustrated and then they don't scan it. They didn't come in there saying, I'm not going to pay for my milk. But like apparently the analysis that they could run is they, that through all these camera recordings, they could see people struggling to scan it and then saying, never mind, and just chuck it over there. So it's pretty interesting, but... This is one of those circumstances in which, of course, it's, it's an uncomfortable feeling to be recorded like that, when to see yourself when you're scanning and paying for things. But it's like an instant way to provide the self-checkout while at the same time protecting the loss column. Because now, how are you? What are you going to, you're going to steal, you're going to steal something on camera? I mean, no, of course not. That's your, your image. That's, that's not a good move. Now, Walmart, very big company, they predict or project that a retailer of that scale could be losing roughly $4 billion a year through processes like this. $4 billion just later. Milk, milk scanners, people not scanning their milk. Uh, so this is a big deal. It could be very effective. You could see more of this is what I'm trying to say. Now, I get it. I, I, I feel like there's going to be some apprehension, obviously, because it is, like I said, it's an awkward feeling. What do you think, Will? Do you care if you're getting recorded at the checkout? Yeah, I, I would be more careful, mm -hmm. especially. But I mean, would like, you stop going to a store if they were going to record you at checkout? Like, would that, that be so uncomfortable that you're like, I don't want to go there anymore? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't know. Depends. Depends on the store, I guess. It's just really invasive. Like, why are you recording it? Where is it stored? Is you know, being sold? Like the the video, some sort of data is being sold. Yeah, I get pretty skeptical with that. Oh, uh, yeah. So. 
Yeah, well, and that's the thing, right? That's the argument. Jack just brought up the idea of the, the difference between a, a real human being, like a cashier, or just staring back at yourself in the form of a camera. Well, I mean, you could probably figure this out when you go to a store, the difference in the number of self-checkouts versus cashiers, mm -hmm. right? You're seeing an expansion in the self-checkout department. There's something about not having to bother anyone, talk to anyone. You just quickly go through, maybe also depending on the number of items you have, that might influence it also. But yeah, I mean, I don't see, uh, I see a future in which self-checkout becomes more prominent, if not the standard. You're seeing it roll out everywhere. It seems more futuristic. And just like at gas stations, they used to fill up your car with gas. Think about that. And then all of a sudden it was just became the de facto standard self-serve concept. Mm. And I think the same thing's gonna happen here. The standard will be self-checkout and then there'll be like one cashier. Yeah, yeah. For people, but like, like ATMs. Imagine going to the bank. It's, it seems insane, but no, what? You don't wanna talk to anyone? It's like, well, no. It turns out, it just like flying an airplane, it, it might be more efficient across the entire scope of it to have it automated. Like more, most people are probably going to get out of a bank faster with the automated machines than they are with human beings. Yeah. And even even at the store, I don't know, the store is a little bit hit and miss because I've seen some people really struggle on the self checkout. Yeah. But uh, for me, I feel like I'm faster most yeah. of the time. I think a lot of elderly people love to talk. Yeah, that's fine. Conversations. Hey, I'm, I don't think you should get rid of cashiers counter. completely. Absolutely. I agree with you. It's lost. But, but Jack, in, when we start talking about these tech stories, we're always talking about lost jobs. Whether you're talking about Uber or you're talking about uh, this situation here with the self-checkout, it's always technology displacing human beings. Convenience. Te technology does that makes human beings lives easier at the same time it makes human beings less important to the entire equation we end up just as consumers exclusively almost not always but a lot of the time that's what ends up happening so i'm sure walmart would say oh this frees up bandwidth we can move these people into other departments we can keep the store possibly more organized we could uh move them into a distribution facility somewhere you know, organizing things. that They're, they're going to make that claim. They're never going to say, yeah, we're eliminating a bunch of jobs by putting these things in. But the self-checkout is the way of the future or the Amazon Go checkout. No checkout. Just pick it up, walk out. Uh, speaking of the future, apparently we're, we're a lot closer to the idea of not just electric cars, but also electric planes. The Paris Air Show sold 15 billion in planes, but 4 million... A $4 million electric plane stole the show. How about that? Now, these are small little planes. They're, gonna, they're not flying across the uh, Atlantic Ocean or anything. Regional planes. But apparently, they are very efficient. I mean, they kind of have a similar story to like an electric car, to be honest. This company, Cape Air, they ordered, they ordered a few of them. Double-digit number of orders. So, I guess that means 10. And each unit is $4 million, each plane. The plane is called Alice. It can fly 650 miles at 500 miles per hour with three electric motors, one on the tail and one on each wing tip. It carries a 900 kilowatt hour battery, which is nine times bigger than inside of a Tesla car. Now, these batteries are really heavy, which is part of the reason that these are currently short distance, smaller scale airplanes for the time being in fact this airplane that we're looking at this alice i think it carries nine passengers so it's not going to move around a lot of people but for regional airlines that do a bunch of flights between you know within a small proximity they can save a ton of money apparently on fuel by just recharging this guy right here it can be uh 10 times less expensive for fuel alone so that could mean if you only had to take short flights, you could have a much lower fare for those regional flights if you if you are okay with flying on one of these electric vehicles. Now, they, they claim as well there's less maintenance and everything else, as you would do if you were trying to sell one of these. And it's not it's not a solution for the entire industry. As you saw, this, this particular show, uh, the, the, the majority of... Uh, airplanes moved were, were your traditional fuel-burning airplanes, $15 billion worth. 
and you only sold a handful of these electric ones. So it's definitely not there yet. But if you want to play it from the environmental side, Will, because I know you're a real nature guy, mm. you spend a lot of time out there in nature, as you should, by the way. Uh, spending time in nature associated with better psychological health. Did you know that, Will? No. So That's don't good. resist. Okay. Get out there in the woods. I'll you try know, my best. Take the dog for a walk, go on a bike ride, things like this. Very healthy. Uh, the aviation industry contributes 2 to 3% of all global emissions. So countries like Sweden and Norway say they plan to make all short flights electric by 2040. Mm. So uh, I, kind of a cool development. Are we on the cusp of Tesla in the skies? Maybe so. It would seem to make sense. They've been somewhat successful down here. I don't think it's going to overwhelm the industry anytime soon, but it's cool to be thinking about these alternative. I mean, you know, obviously I'm not flying to, you know, across the ocean, but... Mm -hmm. But it is something. Speaking of airlines, how about this, Will? I know Jack's going to like this one, too. Air Canada passenger claims she woke up on dark, empty plane alone. You, you saw this one? What a, what a crazy, cool story this is. This passenger was going from Quebec to Toronto. Fell asleep during the ride. It's a short flight. It's a 90-minute flight. Fell asleep. Then she said she woke up in total darkness around midnight which is a few hours after the flight landed. Freezing cold, still strapped in my seat. <laughs> what a time to be alive, Willie Do. That's horrible. What a time to be alive, Willie Do. What a time to be alive, Willie Do. I just had to loop that one a couple of times. Um, she claims it'd be like an insomniac. So when it hits, it hits. And it's just, you don't, I guess you're just out because you're so exhausted because when you need to sleep, you can't sleep. Your sleep is all messed up. I don't know. But the weird part about this is the Facebook post she put, look at this. Can you see this Facebook post? We'll go down on the page. I don't know if we're on the same article here. Find the one, maybe click, uh, try the CNN post there. Anyway, the Facebook post, which broke the story from this girl's own account of the story, it's like, look how long it is here, Jack. You can see my screen. It's a whole massive story, which she didn't share, like somebody else shared here, sharing for a friend, Tiffany Adams. Another sleepless night. Unfortunately, insomnia doesn't care that I work in the morning. And then emojis, and then it goes back to the story. I had, had an incredible week in Quebec, blah, blah, blah. And then it gets to the dark part. I fell asleep. Less than halfway through my short flight, I wake up around midnight. A few hours after I landed, freezing cold, strapped in my seat in complete darkness. I'm talking pitch black. As someone with anxiety disorder, as is, I can tell you how terrifying this was. I think I'm having a bad dream because seriously, how is this happening? My phone lit up with missed messages and of course I assured D I would text when I landed in Toronto. So anyway, you get the idea. It's like a horror movie. Trapped, stranded on an airplane. She goes on and on. She tries everything. Her phone dies. The panic ensues. Well, eventually, she gets into the cockpit. She finds a flashlight. And she uses the flashlight to locate the exit, in which case she uses the emergency aspect of the exit. You know, you pull the three latches, get the door open. And oh. she finds out at that point that she's parked over in the distance, nowhere near the terminal. She's in the overnight parking for planes that aren't in use. So now she's got the door off, and she's waving and screaming SOS symbols. She can't get down. She can't get down. So she's looking for a rope inside her so she can kind of like climb down from the entry point of the plane while still trying to get people's attention, while still panicking. Eventually, one of the luggage carriers spots her, heads over with the ladder, gets her down, and then Air Canada offers her a limo in a hotel. And she says, um, no, are you kidding me? All I want is to go home. I have work in a few hours. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they're like do you want a bottle of champagne to go with your your fun outing is it weird that i kind of look, look at this and think this would be kind of interesting yeah, really you'd be trying to sue right them there. i don't think i'd be trying to sue them i think i would just be like wow i'm on a plane i mean i would be annoyed i guess at a yeah. certain point i'm like okay i'll, I'll knock the door initial off. thoughts though would be kind of cool and yet my initial feeling wouldn't be uh -oh. panic. It'd be like, whoa, I fell asleep on this plane. Yeah, I agree with you. That would be kind of cool. For some reason. But I will say, Will, I have a story for you, okay? Uh. 
So when I was a kid, this, this exact thing happened to me or close to it on a school bus. And I never rode the school bus again after that. Traumatized. I didn't even like the school bus to begin with, but I did, went on a school bus one time. And for some reason, Vin wasn't with me. I don't know what he did to get out of it. But I went on a school bus to go home, okay? I normally would get picked up or walk. I don't know why I was on this bus. I can't remember. One time I went on the bus. I was sitting at the back of the bus. And when it got to my stop, it was a huge crowd trying to get out. And the bus driver was in a hurry for some reason. Like, come on, let's go. And I was young. I'd never been on the school bus before. I panicked and was like, I'm not going to make it in time. And as I was approaching the exit, he slammed the door shut. And I was like, do I tell him I need to get off here? And I, and, and I was afraid, so I just sat back down. Huh. And I was like, I don't know. Am I going to get another shot at this? Am I going back to the school? What am I doing? So I sat back down. I'm like, maybe he'll notice. Nothing. Goes to all the remaining stops. Says nothing. Brings me all the way back to the school. Didn't acknowledge. Didn't acknowledge. Just, oh. just, uh, just, uh, oh, uh, I didn't call your parents or whatever. I don't remember exactly what happened, but I was traumatized. <laughs> he just goes out for a smoke. It's like I was traumatized as a young, youngster. He had no interest in uh, getting me to my destination. And he, well, he, he was frustrated. I mean, imagine being a bus driver. It yeah. was frustrating. It was kids and screaming and all the rest of it. But I get back to the school, they call my parents and, and they're like, You're, you know, your son is back here. He didn't, you gotta come pick him up. Hmm. And, and so I went on a round trip. I went on a round trip around town on a school <laughs> bus for no good reason. And I never went on a school bus after. I'm like, oh, those, those things are a mess. I don't wanna be on there. Yeah. I think I just walked home after that from that point forward, to be honest. But I guess it's not as good as this story, but it's kind of sim like kind of similar. Which one? Like a nightmare for a kid. For a kid. It was a nightmare for me as a kid. Obviously, yeah, as an I'm adult. To paint a story. Oh, paint oh, there, the ghost scary, bus. Yeah, uh, that's how I felt, Will. Felt, it was very goosebumps. Was, anything could have happened. It was just me and the bus driver. Honestly, when it was just me and the bus driver, I was like, is this guy going to acknowledge me or address me? Because he didn't. He just drove. Right back to the school. Didn't ask me if I missed my stop. Didn't ask me anything. Yeah. He was just okay with the fact that I didn't get off. I think he figured what happened happened. He was frustrated. Fine, you're going back to the school. Wow. Anyway, this, this person's story much better than that. But, but apparently, and, 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 and I know I was having fun with it, but apparently the person is actually distraught. Either that or they're playing it up for the lawsuit. I don't know. But uh, she says, I haven't got much sleep since the reoccurring re night terrors. And waking up anxious and afraid, I'm alone, locked up, some dark, someplace dark. This is a super long post, so I'll wrap it up. But please share if you know anyone who has gone through this. I don't like feeling so alone. <laughs> so, uh, Will, it's hey like, man, she some she survived some sort of like crazy ordeal. It's like, come on. Like, okay, so you're not you're not up? feeling sympathetic on this. Yeah, look, man. Not to her degree. It's okay, like, okay, it's so dramatic. I hear you. You're being you're being honest, and I hear you. And I kind of I I I pretty much agree with you. I'm just saying we weren't there. We don't know what the circumstance. I, it is a bit weird that nobody would have pulled her off this plane. Yeah, I mean, like just check the aisles, you know. Like, like it's a bit a weird. You, you know what I mean? It, that that no one would have seen her sleeping there, but. Uh, the whole story is weird. Apparently, Air Canada is still investigating. They've had multiple phone calls with her to, like, try to get to the bottom of how it happened. But also, can I just say, when I read this story, I thought, you've been sleeping on an empty plane that landed with your seatbelt on for two hours since it landed? Like, that's pretty wild. You've been on an airplane. When it lands, it's like there's a commotion. Everyone yeah. exits. Yeah, maybe there's more to the story. Kirk's saying that maybe certain things were ingested. I don't know. I'm sure they'll uh, get to the bottom of it if they have to. I, I, look, if she goes to try to sue him for a billion dollars, they'll probably want to do their very own investigation to see, like, were you, did this person take gravel or whatever? Because that makes you, I never took, I never take gravel. Any of you guys take it? No. Did, does it knock you out to that degree that the plane could be landed for two hours? No, I don't think, I don't think, well, on most people, I don't think it works. So anyway, 
if she's watching this, she's mad. She's like, I'm in, I have insomnia. Uh, I was sleeping. What can I do? So maybe she's right. Look, I don't know. I'm, it's just a crazy story. It's crazy from a number of angles. But I'm just saying, if it's me at first, I'm like, whoa, I'm on it. For me, initially, it's excitement. And then I'm annoyed. And then I'm doing the same as her. I'm knocking out the, the door. But I'm not like super deadly panicked until I'm starting to get you know, hungry and thirsty and whatnot. Yeah. At that point, then I'm like, but I guess I would also assume that once I've got the door off, uh, it's only a matter of time. <laughs> you try to fly the plane. <laughs> it's only a matter That's of time I once I got the door off that they're going to see me. I mean, I'll just sit there with my, my legs dangling out the thing. I'll just be looking until yeah. somebody... Yeah. I just feel like there could be a, a much more terrifying stranded situation than that one. Yeah, I agree. Anyway, but pitch black is pitch black. Everybody's afraid of pitch. Nobody likes pitch black. No, she's suing, Jack. Don't worry. She's definitely going to sue. I mean, I'm not saying that she has. I'm not suggesting that she does if she doesn't plan on it. If you don't have to sue, then I mean, if you survive, then how much money should somebody get for that ordeal, Jack, in your opinion? 50,000? 50, 50,000 for one, for two hours of sleep on an airplane? Yeah, I mean, maybe. It seems to be that it's got to be 50 if, if you got to get a lawyer and everything else. And it's Air Canada and all the rest of it. <clears throat> McDonald's says quarter pounder sales are up. And you know why? Because they shifted. This is what they say. Because they shifted from frozen to fresh beef. Mm. I didn't know they did that. They didn't really publicize it. Or I don't see any commercials or anything. But apparently along the way recently, they made the decision to switch suppliers, their supply chain, from a frozen quarter pounder to a fresh fresh beef quarter pounder. And because of that, they think they sold 40 million more quarter pounders. So people must have noticed that there was a difference in their quarter pounder and they, they started to enjoy it more. And so they see this, uh, this increase. Now, because of that, like this is kind of interesting in the midst of the whole Impossible Burger stuff going on, which I've been following that situation because this Beyond Meat company... Their stock has been skyrocketing. Are we getting the double? Are we doing the double Lou right now? Kirk, how dare you? You tried it. Okay, and? Yeah, the texture is a lot like a fast food meat burger. Okay. It's really good. Does it seem impossible? I was, uh, I ate a lot of vegetables and vegetarian, and I thought I was like, wow, I can't do this funny meal. So in, in a marketplace in which the Impossible Burger, Burger is getting all kinds of headlines, the stock is skyrocketing since the IPO. A lot of people think it's going to crash for sure. But anyhow, as of right now, super successful. McDonald's is going the opposite way. Not only do they say they're not interested in the Impossible Burger, but they're moving towards fresh beef, more beef. They're getting beefier. They're, they're doubling down on the beef. And apparently they've been successful. They claim it's the biggest... Uh, um, the biggest transition they've had since uh, introducing all-day breakfast, which they rolled out in 2015. Now, interestingly enough, the fresh beef burger at McDonald's in the Quarter Pounder is not available in Alaska, Hawaii, and U.S. territory. So you're still getting frozen stuff if you're in any of those locations. Uh, but it also means they got rid of their signature crafted recipes. They used to have those, like, specialty burgers, apparently. The Quarter Pounder, just with real beef was outperforming all that stuff. So, like, get rid of it all and just target the quarter pounder. Just nail the quarter pounder. So they claim to have nailed it. I don't know if uh, anyone here has eaten a quarter pounder recently. And uh, if you've noticed a difference, nobody's eaten one. Well, anyway, now's the time. Fresh beef McDonald's. Who would have thought? No more frozen burger. On the, on the same uh, subject, uh, food... We're going to stay with food for a minute here, but a uh, different, uh, less of a success story. Rat falls from ceiling on the customer's table at Buffalo Wild Wings. Oh. <laughs> now, there's an image. There's a picture of this, Will. So uh, go ahead and just load that baby right up. An unwanted guest surprised a woman at Buffalo Wild Wings. Look at that, Jack. You see? Take a look at that. Now, imagine that's you, you're eating, and uh, this is what you happen to see. Oh, 
falls down, perfect, it's in perfect shape, tail hanging over the edge of the table, and you're about to order, you hear something from above on the ceiling, and then this little guy drops down. Uh, would you still be hungry after that, Jack? No, you wouldn't. The uh, customer says it was disgusting. It was still alive. Its heart was still beating. Looks, wow. Looks dead there. It looks dead to me, but I'm guessing maybe it had eaten some poison or something. It was barely hanging on. And uh, it just dove down to its death. I don't really know. Uh, I heard a noise, and we all looked up, and down came the rat. Norman told KTRK TV. The restaurant's manager quickly scooped up the rat with two plates and placed it in a bag. Norman's lunch was compensated. <laughs> so he took it. I like that he picked it up with plates. It's kind of weird. They, they don't have gloves? Like, why do you have to pick it up with plates? Because then you got to eat off the plates. I don't know. I just It just would be a weird visual. Maybe plates were nearby. It was the fastest way to get this rat uh, up out of there. Anyway. Buffalo Wild Wing comes out. They say the isolated incident at the Westchester area Buffalo Wild Wings in Los Angeles yesterday was unfortunate. We hold Buffalo Wild Wings to the highest operating standards and promptly close the restaurant for proper remediation, cleaning, and sanitization. Apparently, they have an A rating from the City Department of Public Health. So, can I just... I know this is gross. I realize this is gross. But can I just say, like, man... This stuff is bound to happen. It, you, a rat got in the ceiling? I'm, it's different if the place is infested. But, like, if a rat gets into your building, is it, did you do anything wrong or is it just constantly a possibility? Do you know what I'm saying? Like, you deal in food. It's gross. Go behind any restaurant. Go to the garbage. Go to Spadina. Go behind all the restaurants there where the trash cans are. I mean, it's just kind of the nature of the thing. You have food, you have food waste. Guess what? You got rodents, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I'm not saying I'm happy about it. I'm not saying it would make me hungry to have this rat drop down while I'm about to eat. I would, uh, I would be a lot like uh, this individual here, Norman, uh, who, when the lunch was compensated. I'd be getting the lunch compensated, Will. If that, you'd move tables. Yeah, I hope you'd move tables. But... As far as being surprised by it, I don't find it to be all that shocking. Weirdly enough, this doesn't like blow my mind. Now, remember that story of the rat in the, in the, in the bath on Spadina? The rat was in the window bathing itself in the fountain. <laughs> Do you remember, you, remember you remember this? No, 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 not that, not that rat. That rat's unbelievable. That's not an actual rat though. Which that was a different story, the shower rat. No, 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 I need you to say rat, Restaurant Spadina window. That's what we're looking for here. Absolutely. Rats feast at Dumpling House. Yeah, that one right there, 2008. Oh, that's a different one. But they're right in the window. So that's another one. Look, if they're right in the window of your store and they're eating on the, on the countertop, like then there's no excuse. They didn't fall from the ceiling. It's not isolated incident. But this isn't the one that I wanted. Oh, yeah, Happy 7? No, 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 that's not it either. Wow, there's been a lot of these. Yeah, try that one. <laughs> October 9th. Restaurant closed after rat spied. Yeah, try that one. <laughs> Keep going down. Happy 7? Oh, man. Uh, I don't know. There's, it turns out on Spadina, there's been a number of situations uh, like this. So. Was it New Ho King? Yeah, maybe it was New Ho King. Try to put New Ho King in there real quick. King? Yeah, New Ho King. I mean, I've eaten there as well. Scroll it. Popular restaurant reopens after rats care. Oh, that was in 2018. That's recent. Uh, well, anyway, look, this is a common thing. Is what This is a point I'm trying to get to. We're not going to find this particular image. There's a funny rat. He was, he was in the... He, he was in the front of a Chinese restaurant inside of the fountain. He was just bathing himself. And, and he, there was a crowd around him on the street watching before the news, before it hit the news. And then the place had to get shut down, even though prior to that, it had clearance from the, the licensing body, public health and whatnot. So 
Look, it's just a, there's degrees to it. Nobody wants to eat a place that's infested, but you can't keep these guys away. I mean, I'm not saying it's appetizing to me. I'm just saying you can't keep these guys away. Anyway, well, let's, uh, you got a question for us today. Uh, you got anything exciting, a story you want to share? Uh, just a question here. This is from uh, Victor. Hi, Lou and crew. I saw you talking about Starbucks in one of your vids and was wondering what you usually get or like from Starbucks. Will okay. Kirk Jack, feel free to answer if you like. Will Kirk Jack, feel free to answer as well. Wow, this is a going after everyone. Victor, going after the whole squad here. This is easy for me. I always get the same stuff. I keep it so simple, Will. It's ridiculous how simple it is. Yeah. I'm either getting an iced Americano, all right, which is, I mean, it is what it sounds like. It's simple. I'll put a little bit of milk in it. That's the only thing. Just to give it a little slightly different uh, texture. Texture is not the right word consistency so iced americano with milk now the now i won't get that if they have cold brew the new what is it nitro cold brew what are they called yeah nitro cold brew on tap i'll get that that yeah that's the new right there i like that picture look at that thing it almost like has like a beer it has a little carbonation to it it's so much fun try the nitro cold brew if you're into iced coffees and you want something even more special tasting not all the locations have it but i'll get that uh, i'll just get a nice coffee sometimes i'm talking summer drinks because it's hot right now or it's summer it's not hot today but it's summer other than that i'm doing a dark roast just a regular just a dark roast if i'm getting a hot coffee and that's it i'm, I'm a simple man and I, you know it's been a few years now i've been going that path i've been going that route from time to time i will get an iced tea just the tea not the lemonade combination, no sweetener, just the tea on ice. That happens from time to time as well. That's it. That rounds it out. That's all that I get. Mm. What, what about you, Will? I go for teas as well. Um, chai lattes, green tea. Oh, yeah. I've seen you get that. Yeah, simple. You're not a big coffee guy. More of a tea guy. Yeah. I, li I like tea. All right. Coffee, not so much. Well, no need to get upset about it. No need to yell and scream about it. Chai, chai latte? Yeah, they're good. That's a bit fancier. You pay a few. It's, you pay yeah. a little more for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got the milk. It's a bit frothy. It's got a whole thing going on. Mm -hmm. Good for you, Kirk. What's your order? Well, I know your order as well, isn't it? You uh, you're just getting a dark roast as well, are you not? Yeah, I go for a cappuccino. What? Yeah, if I don't get a coffee, I go for a cappuccino. But oh, you're saying if you don't just get, but your reg, what's your regular order? Oh, dark roast. Just a dark roast. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh, wow. No, I don't, but that sounds delicious. As a, as a treat, he said cold brew and they put ice cream in it. He had that when he was in China. Jack, what's your go-to? I know yours as well. Tall blonde, right? Yeah. I like my coffee, like I like All right. <laughs> Jack just goes for a tall blonde. I've seen, I've seen him get it. I, I could have answered this on behalf of everyone. Well, I think I did, in fact. Uh, well, you know, you see the orders going around from time to time. Uh, so anyway, yeah, that's the that's the Starbucks light roast for those of you those of you that are wondering. It's the blonde, tall, the smallest size, tall, grande, venti. I guess we should talk about sizes. I'm usually in the venti territory if I have my choice, but I I will deal with a grande here and there. Yeah, grande. Jack's going sure. tall. What's your size? Grande. 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 Okay, very well. There it is. I mean, you know, we did it. The rats they fell from the ceiling. We haven't, you know. Could happen anywhere. Could happen here. And, and if it happens here, I don't want you to lose your appetite. I want you to keep coming back. So give us a chance. We can uh, reme remediate. We can sanitize. And your meal will be compensated. We'll see you on the next one.